In this video, I'm going to show you this incoming call animation using only HTML and CSS. Let's get started. So if you're new to my channel, I make videos on UX, UI design, and front-end coding. If you enjoy this video, please leave a comment down below so I know what kind of tutorial you would like to see next. So jumping into this project, I'm going to make an incoming call animation that is going to have pulsating circles in the background and then a phone icon in the middle that will increase and decrease in size. So to start off, I have this code pen project that I'm going to write all the HTML and CSS for this project. So right now I only have a little bit of HTML. The HTML I have is a link to the font family for material icons because we will use a material icon later on in the project. So to get started, first I'm going to create the radiating circles and then I'm going to create the phone icon on top of it. I'm going to include a body tag. And within that body tag, I'm going to have two divs. So the first div, I'm going to have it as a class of circle one. And the second div, I'm going to have it a class of circle two. This is all the HTML I'm going to write right now. I'm going to make some modifications to it later, but that's a good start. So now I'm going to start with the CSS. So initially I put box sizing and then border box. And then I'm going to call the body tag. And within the body tag, I'm going to include a margin left and a margin top. I want the margin left to depend on the width of the screen, but I want the top to be at a fixed position. That's why I'm choosing EM here and a percentage over there. And then for the height, I'm just going to make it 100% of the viewport height. I'm going to want the elements in this animation to align horizontally and vertically, so then they're all placed one on top of another. So I'm going to essentially have three circles placed exactly on top of one another. So the way I'm going to do that is in the body, I'm actually going to make it a grid. So I'm going to write display and then grid. And then I'm going to write justify content center and then align items center. Now I'm going to add some properties to the actual div. So I'm going to reference the div class. And within the div class, first I'm going to set a particular height and width. So I'll just write 40 pixels and then the width will be 40 pixels as well. I'm going to set a particular border radius. So I want it to be a circle, so it'll be 50%. I'll set a placeholder background color for now so then we can at least see it on the screen. And then I'm also going to make the position absolute. So now we technically have two dots on the screen, but they're placed one on top of each other, so we only see one. So now I'm going to add the animation so it actually starts to pulse. So I'm going to write animation and then write scaling, and that will be a name of a keyframe that we will create. We want this keyframe animation to take place over two seconds, so I'm going to write two seconds. And then I want it to have a particular curve, so right now I'll just write linear, and I want it to play forever, so I'm just going to write infinite. Next, we will write this keyframe called scaling. So I'm going to write add keyframes and then scaling. And for the scaling, I'm going to set a particular color and size of the element for the beginning state and then a different color and size for the ending state. So at 0%, I want this dot to transform in some way. So I'm going to write transform, scale, and I'll make it quite large. I'll make it four for now. And then at 100%, I want it to grow even more. So I'm going to write transform scale 10. So it will go from four to 10. So this is now growing and getting bigger. Now we also want the color of the dot to change as it grows. We want it to decrease in opacity as it increases in scale. So first I'm going to set a particular background color and then I'm going to modify it. So I'm going to want to choose a pink color that I know I'm going to want to reuse throughout the design so I'm actually going to declare it as a variable at the top. So in root, I'm going to write dash dash pink. And then I'm going to reference that pink color at the 0% mark. So now as you can see, it's going from this pink color that we defined to this red color that we defined with the div but I want the background color to change when it's at 
So instead of it being this pink color that we defined, I'm actually going to make it another color at zero opacity. So the way I'm going to write that is RGBA for RGB and then alpha is the last value. So now it's changing from this pink color to this other pink color, but also decreasing its opacity. Now we do have the two circles playing one on top of each other, so we only really see one. So in order to see both, I'm going to add a little delay. So I'm going to reference the class of each circle and then add an animation delay. So I'm going to write circle one and then animation dash delay, and I'll write zero seconds. And then I'm going to reference that second circle and then add another animation delay of one second. So now we actually see both circles animating in the design. Next, I'm going to want to modify how this animation feels. It feels kind of static with that linear curve. So instead, I want to create a different feel for the animation. And I know I want this curve to be used throughout the design as well. So I'm again going to go to the top and add a variable. So I'm going to write dash dash animation curve and then write the values for the particular curve I want to use in this design. And if you're wondering how I got those values, I actually went on to an animation website and then played around with different values until I found one that I liked. So now this is looking really good so far. So next I'm going to add the icon for the phone on top of this and also make that animate as well. So I'm going to go back into the body and within the body, I'm going to make another div with a class of phone. And within this class, I'm going to include that call icon. That's a material icon. So again, I went to the material icons website and picked this icon, and now I'm going to use it in the design. So if you want to use a particular material icon, I recommend going to the Google website and looking for an icon there. So I know this is going to be a span with a class of material icons. And the icon that I'm using is called call. So when I add that to the page, it appears, but it looks a little bit odd. So now I'm going to add some modifications to that new div that has that phone icon in it. So in my CSS, I'm going to reference that phone class and add certain characteristics here. So first, I actually want that phone icon to appear higher than those other circles. So I have to increase the Z index and I'll just make it two to be safe. So now that phone will always be on top of those circles. I'm going to add a background color to this div of that pink color that we defined earlier. I also want this phone sequence to have a different animation than the other circles. So I'm going to write animation. It'll have another kind of keyframe animation associated with it. So I'm just going to write phone. So that'll be another keyframe that we'll make. It'll take place over one second. It will have the animation curve that we defined at the beginning. It'll be an infinite animation, and this one will actually be alternate reverse because I want this one to play backwards and forwards. So right now we see the phone icon and this other little circle. So this is the new div that we created that will animate differently than the other circles. I want these elements to be displayed in a grid. And I'm going to have the same justify content center and align item center as before. So that way the phone icon is definitely in the center of this new circle. I'm also going to want to include a border so that way it stands out a little bit from the other animating circles. So it will be 0.5 pixels, white and solid. Now I'm going to reference the class of material icons and make some modifications to the actual icon. So again, I'm going to write material icons. So I'm going to make the color of this white so it stands out a little bit more. Next, I'm going to make this keyframe animation called phone that we defined earlier. So underneath this other keyframe, I'm going to add a new one. And this one is called phone. And I want this animation to be a little bit more subtle than the other animation that we created. So I'm going to make at the 0% mark, I want it to have one scale and I want the scale to slightly increase at the 100% mark. So when it's at 0%, I want it to transform scale of four because I want it to be quite large. And then at the 100% mark, I want it to only be slightly bigger. So I'm going to make it 4.5. So that will be a more subtle animation. So this is looking really good. I just realized that I didn't use the new animation curve that we defined at the top or the pulsating circles. So I'm going to grab this 
animation curve and apply it to that other animation sequence. So instead of it being linear, I'm going to add that other animation curve so it'll have a different feel. So there you go. That's how I made an incoming call animation using only HTML and CSS. Please let me know if you have any questions about the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.